Hello. This is a how to assemble video for this air scrubber tower for a 3D printer enclosure. The idea is that this air scrubber is freestanding, sits in the corner of an enclosure. It has three HEPA filters at the top. There are four separate chambers for activated charcoal, each separated by a nylon membrane. This is the speed control for the fan. There's the fan here. Below that is the nozzle that exhausts air from the system as well as recirculates air back into the enclosure. Here is a backflow preventer valve flapper, and then this is the exhaust path for the air. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assemble the uh, supports that hold the whole thing up. And to do that, we're going to use this piece of filament here through these holes that are in the hinge here. So you've got to stack these together like this, then carefully take the uh, the hinge pin, the piece of filament, and twist it in there. Feed it all the way through to uh, the upper section. And this is a piece of PETG. It's nice and flexible. It's less brittle. And um, there you have it. And the last thing you do is you want to snip off the end so that bingo. The next step is to attach the fan to the base structure to the adapter for the upper chambers and to make this happen we need to find the front corner of this guy. So first we'll do is loosely attach all of the individual chambers together. Not too tight. Just get them so that you kind of feel some resistance then stop turning. go. Top section. There. Now, get them tight and then back off a little bit so there's lots of room for further tightening in the future. So a little snug, but not, not really, really tight. Just Now, I can tell this is probably the um, best spot for the corner will be right here because that will allow me to back off some room. I can't really make it that corner because that would require it probably to be too tight once I get all the nylon layers in here. So we're going to pick this as our, as our front corner right there. Put a piece of tape on there so I can keep track of that for the next step. Now we'll attach the adapter to the fan. We'll start with the front corner. Not finger tight there. Press it in this position. Feed the Allen wrench through the fan hole. There you go. Now we'll attach the base. There's that front again, right there. Base goes right like that. You should be able to readily find the holes. We'll do one corner at a time. M3 screw there, hold it in the position, and then get a nut finger tight. Okay, same technique. Fish the Allen wrench through the fan hole here. Tighten him up, and then as soon as I finish up this, I'll do all other two holes. All four screws are now installed. You can see the longer screw here by the front corner. This is longer because there's less material to pass through. The next procedure is to install the, the exhaust nozzle. The exhaust nozzle has a recirculating port right there. That port can be oriented in any direction you'd like. I'm choosing this direction for my arrangement. I'm also going to be attaching the housing for the speed control for the fan. That's going to go right there. We're going to start by putting the screw in the back corner of the nozzle. I'm putting in the screws backwards uh, in 
the heads go into the knot well here because it's just easier to access the screws and the nuts by choosing that direction. So I'm going to drop the screw into that hole there, very carefully put a nut in place. Looks a little tricky back there. Okay, the next step is to put a screw opposite the control housing in this corner here. The housing goes over here on this side, so two more screws are going to go in there. One here. One in there, and then we're going to attach that. So I'll put two nuts on there. And then we'll move on to the uh, electronics. Okay, <laughs> so you've got the nuts on there, completely attached. You can see where that housing goes. I've pre pressed in a couple of nuts into these nut wells here in the back of the, of the housing. <clears throat> okay, set that aside. Okay, so this is the electronics. That we're installing a um, couple of things here. Let's turn this thing upside down, it's easier to see it. So the electronics board, PCB board, sits there in that slot right there, like that. Okay, and then um, the outer housing for the controls are right here. That's going to be arranged so that the, um, the control knob is out here on this side facing the front. And then you can see this is the knob. The knob will through that hole right there like that. That hole. And then the outside of that hole will attach this washer and this nut. And then, of course, the knob. So I've already adapted the fan here. You can see I've got the plus and minus supply side of the fan connected to this this red connector. I stripped away all the other uh, wires that aren't needed for this installation. And then I've pre-wired the PCB with the uh, this is the uh, this is the connector for the fan here. And it's marked plus and minus on the back so you want to make sure you keep your plus and minus straight forward here straight on between the fan and then of course here's the supply side where it says power plus and minus and that's wired up so this is the cable that will feed into the uh, power source 12 volt power source so I'm going to go ahead and install this and show you how I've done that after I've finished it okay so I've connected my cables you can see what I've done here is the PCB is sitting in that slot there. The fan wire is connected through here. The, I've routed the power supply line down along the base here. And then I've used, there's little holes in this leg of the base for tie wraps. I've put tie wraps in, as you can see there. And uh, I'll cut those off in a second. And, and then on the front of the control panel, there's the, the controls going through that hole. I've tightened the washer and nut there, and we're now ready to attach the enclosure bottom to the control top. There's a little hole there, notch you're going to catch capture, and there's a little cutout here in this side of the uh, enclosure to allow for the wiring to pass through. So I'm going to attempt to get all the 
the holes line up here. There, I think we're we're there. So now the cabling is passing through that hole there, if you can see that. And then holding this in place right now before I attach the screws. Looks like everything is connected. The notch is filled in there at the top. Now what I'll do is I'll take a three screw, push it into there, and attach. that. All set. So there you have it. Electronics is completed. I'll cut off those tie wraps and just squeeze the knob on the front here. And we're all set. The next step involves assembling the, the chambers that will hold the activated charcoal. And for this, we're, I've got these uh, little uh, footies or nylon material. You can get this in a shoe store. Uh, you might have some at home already that you use. Essentially, um, looking for something extremely light like that. Uh, air can pass through with almost no obstruction that will be able to suspend the charcoal layers at different different levels. So what we do here is we're going to stretch the material across the opening just above the fan and while you're holding it stretched screw on the chamber. Now you've got a surface there that can take the activated charcoal. So at this point we're going to take the charcoal. Here it is. We're going to scoop up, scoop some out of here. We're going to, so we're going to put, fill the chamber about halfway up. You want some room at the top so air can circulate above the above the pellets. And as soon as you get that one down, then you do the next layer. Take one other footy, stretch it across the top like that. Screw that on. There you go. Ready for the next, next layer of pellets. Okay, I've gone ahead and completed all four layers of charcoal. One, two, three, four. You can see I've got excess material hanging off, so to remove that, I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut away. You can see it's pretty easy. It's very easy to cut with a, with a sharp blade. Just do that, cleans it right up. So I'll, I'll do that for the whole thing, and it'll look really nice. The nylon's been all cleaned up and removed. We're now ready to install the HEPA filters. The HEPA filters look like this. There's a tab in the corner. This tab goes into this opening in this notch there. Slide in the filters. Now before putting the lid on the unit, this is when you could put in some silica beads to help act as an additional drying agent. Put about a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the top, top section. The lid goes on with these three pegs here, into these three holes here. Put the back in first, then the fronts. You're all set to Go to the next step, which is to put on the exhaust tube and the backflow preventer valve. This is the exhaust tube, and this is the flapper for the backflow preventer valve. The exhaust tube 
has two openings here, two notches, which line up with two tabs on the bottom of the exhaust nozzle. You can slide the tube onto the nozzle like so, and then you can spin it any way you'd like. The flapper must be calibrated before it can be installed. The flapper is comprised of this piece of PLA here, the, these two straight selling pins, a rotation indicator, and then this is a piece of M3 threaded bolt that I cut off. It's about six millimeters long. This serves as the counterbalance for the flapper. So I used uh, this, these pliers here to cut, cut, the, cut the piece of the bolt off. And when you do this, you're going to have to very carefully calibrate to make sure that you've got the right amount of counterbalance on your flapper. So give it one or two twists to insert the counterbalance weight. Then insert your uh, straight pins carefully, just put the tips into the hinges of the flapper. Then with that, use a cup to determine if you've got the right balance. Take the flapper, put it upside down, and you will see it balances upside down like that with the balance at the right level. And when it's done well, you'll be able to see about a 10 degree down tilt in the flapper. If it's level or if it's leaning like that, that means there's not enough weight for the counterbalance. You'll need to cut a new piece of screw to uh, get the weight increased. After you've got the balance figured out, remove the, uh, remove the th <coughs> threaded counterbalance weight and use some super glue to glue in the weight. The, what we'll do now <clears throat> is we'll take off the, uh, the tube and in insert the flapper into the tube. Um, <clears throat> the flapper goes in like this with the weight down. It rests inside like that. Then take your pins and stick one in this side here. If these holes <clears throat> in the side of the tube aren't big enough, you'll want to work the screw, the pin back and forth quite a few times to get it large enough so that the, the pin is able to rotate freely inside that hole. You don't want that any of this material in that hole to be hugging the pin and causing friction on the rotation of the, of the flapper. So very carefully insert your pins into there. You want to put a rotation indicator on the other pin. Slide it on there. If you'd like, uh, you can shorten these pins, or you can leave them along the way I've left them here. And there you have it. The uh, properly done, you'll see that the flapper points drops down quickly as soon as the airflow would stop. I'll mount this up and power it up, and I'll show you how it works. So I've attached some power here. You can see I've installed the tube with the flapper into the uh, bottom of the nozzle. If I turn on the, uh, the fan, you can see the flapper opens up. This is pretty much open all the way. And then as I lower the fan speed, it begins to go down. I turn off the fan and the flapper goes shut. It's pretty responsive. Even the slightest amount of fan movement causes the flapper to open up. <clears throat> Once you've tested the system and make, made sure that the flapper works the way you want it to, you'll uh, put some super glue there on the, uh, on the pins so they're held in place. Uh, you want to make sure that you rotate the rotation indicator to the, your preferred orientation and then put some glue on the rotation indicator. The, the purpose of the uh, backflow preventer valve, by the way, is so that damp air does not flow back into your system. When the fan is idle, the uh, air would otherwise flow back through the exhaust tube and come out through the recirculation port. With the valve in place, it reduces the amount of air that's going to flow back into, the into your system and back into your enclosure while your fan is, is not functioning. 
Final steps are to attach the plumbing that exits the air out of the enclosure. This is a, uh, we've got a straight pipe that attaches onto the uh, outside of the edge of the exhaust tube. These two pieces here are the covers for the back of my enclosure. This has an opening for a power cord. Then this is the, the path that the air will, will finally leave my enclosure. So if I <clears throat> first attach the straight pipe, then we attach the vent cover, spin it around, and there you have it. This final piece here mates up with this and slides in over here and covers in the pretty wide opening I have in the back of my enclosure. Okay, thank you for watching.